Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make these adorable tie-dye chocolate cover apples. I was just showing you guys I was drying them. I've already washed them and I'm just going through some of the supplies that we're going to be using. We are going to be using Color Mill oil based food coloring as our paint for these apples. I'm going to be using some scissors for the ribbon. These are Oreo container, Oreo molds that actually broke. So now I just use them to put paint and sprinkles and stuff in when I'm using them. We're going to be dipping our apples in almond bark. You guessed it. You know it's my fave. And we're not going to use any additional oils or any thinners. We're just going to use almond bark since it's so easy to melt. And it gives you that nice smooth consistency and it gives you a good thick coat in only one coat. You don't have to re-dip your treats or anything because it gives you a nice smooth thick coat with just one coat. So we're gonna get that in the microwave. As you guys know, we do 15 to 20 second increments and we stir in between. And then it did take me about a minute and a half breaking it up into 20 minute increments to get it to this consistency. And I will add, when your um, almond bark or your chocolate is still hot, you want your chocolate to cool just a little bit, not cool to the point where it thickens up or getting gets hard, but you don't want to dip your apple into hot chocolate. It just needs to be a little warm or even like at room um, temperature. Just a little warm is what I dip my apples in. I do not dip my apples or any of my treats in my chocolate or my almond bark when it's directly out of the microwave i do let it cool for about two or three minutes just let the temperature come down a little bit and so we're just going to do one quick swirl in that almond bark as you can see you see how nice and thick that one coat is and you don't have to do any double coat and we're going to use a stick to just swirl it around keep swirling around to get that extra chocolate off you're going to do some shakes and get as much chocolate as you can and we're going to do just a quick little swipe under the bottom to get that additional chocolate not too hard not too much you just want to get just a little bit off so your apple is not sitting in a puddle of chocolate Okay, so I've let my chocolate apples harden and they've hardened for about 15 minutes. You want them to be completely dry to touch because you cannot paint on your apples if they are still wet. So now I'm using my oil-based Color Mill um, food coloring and I'm just putting like a drop or two into each one of those little cavities. And then we're going to create a paint with a little bit of vodka yes vodka the type that you drink if you do not want to use vodka you can use lemon extract as well just a few drops and then it'll help you to create an edible oil based paint if you're painting on chocolate you want to use oil based paint if you use regular water based food coloring it will not stick to the chocolate and it, you will not get the proper color it will create little dots or like little beads of water that just sit on top of the chocolate and so when you are doing this step i'm starting with a swirl in the middle and that's going to be the middle of our tie-dye design and so i started off with a little bit too much um paint so i was going back with my brush and just kind of patting that off because if you put too much paint on your brush it will start to run and drip down your apple and it will mess up your design so if you see little puddles like that of 
paint, you just want to go back with your brush or with a napkin and get that extra paint off so it doesn't run down your apple. So I'm actually going to get a napkin, as you can see, and I'm going to dip my paint into um, the paint and then I'm going to wipe it on my napkin so I'll have like more of a matte look. You do not want it to be wet. Like I said, it was too wet when I was doing the red. So that's why I grabbed the napkin and I'm going to dip it in the blue and then I'm going to um, tap it on my napkin because you want it to be more like a watercolor or a matte look. You don't want it to be too wet. Like I said, it will drip down your apple and it will mess up your entire design. So that's why you see me using a napkin now. And I'm just um, going in with the different colors and we're going to follow that swirl. You see that yellow is a little bit too wet. So I'm going to go back over it with my brush just to kind of thin it out just a little bit because we don't want it to be so wet. As you can see, I'm kind of thinning it out with my um, brush and making it not as wet. If you already see that you have enough um, color on your apple, you do not have to go back into the yellow. Just go back into the area that's really wet and pick up some of that extra color and then just go back around and finish your layer or your um, row of yellow with that. This design comes out the best when you just have just a little bit of paint on your brush. I'll say it again, if it's too wet, it will run down your apple. You won't get this watercolor tie-dye effect and it will ruin your design. So just make sure it's not so wet. So if you do see a puddle of water, go back and just dab it with your brush or dab it with a napkin and make sure that you, know, you don't have those um, puddles of food color and that will um ultimately ruined the whole design so i'm just following that design all the way around the apple with my brush and you guys see i'm dipping it in my food coloring and then tapping it on my napkin so i get more of a watercolor matte look and not a super wet look And as you guys see, I'm using my paintbrush to dab, like to do dabs on the apple. I am not painting a straight line. You do not want to do brush strokes. You want to dab your paint on there. I'm just dabbing it to fill in that line. You do not want to actually do a paint stroke because you will not get the same design. You want to just dab the paint with your brush like I am until you fill in that um, next layer of color. Do not use your paintbrush and do a stroke because it's going to give you, you're going to have straight lines and you won't get that um, tie dye effect. So use your brush and dab it as you see that I'm doing. I am not doing any brush strokes. I'm just dabbing it with my paintbrush.
As you guys see, I took the design all the way to the back of the apple and then I closed it in as a circle. And we're just gonna continue doing those colors until we close in that circle, as you can see. And this is how you get that tie dye design over your whole entire apple. And it, all of your apples will be different. None of them will be completely the same or perfect. And that's the whole point of tie dye. Tie dye is like a random design. So you don't have to try to get them exactly the same as the other ones. So these are the apples after I let them dry. And you did see me with some different ribbon um, earlier in the video, but I decided to change it because it didn't quite match the design like I thought it would. So I just changed it to plain white ribbon. And we're just gonna get some satin ribbon bows on these apples, as you can see. I'm making these bows out of some white satin ribbon. And then we're going to hot glue those bows that we make to the actual stick, not to the apple, to the actual stick. And then you'll come out with the most adorable little tie-dye apples with the nice fluffy bows on them. Here we have it guys how pretty did these turn out again thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe bye sweet 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 sweet